He's Brian Cranston. The movie is The Upside. It's in theaters starting today. He uh, plays a wealthy quadriplegic, and he's with uh, Kevin Hart is also in there, Nicole Kidman, Julianne Margulies, and uh, Tate Donovan. The Upside opens in theaters on Friday. You did this a while ago. How many years ago? Well, no, it's about a year and a half ago that we finished it up. And then you brought us a prop from the movie. I did. And this is... um, how would you describe the prop that you gave us for the man cave? Uh, it, it's a, uh, a a wooden appendage uh, to uh, an anatomy uh, that a man would have. Okay, I and think that's so. This kind of clean. this is under the covers. It's under the covers. Yeah, and, and then you have a string that's pulled, right? I, I did. I had. I had a, well, we could say it. Yeah, he gets an erection uh, quite accidentally. And uh, and and this is what the prop guys came up with is for me to surreptitiously pull a string so that we we show and and this is what happens in real life to quadriplegics they they can't always control yeah anything so now did you give this out to everybody you know or just us oh no 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 just you guys. is that the, is that a one of one it's the only one ever made for the movie The Upside. Yeah, you got it. Okay, you, okay. The only I just one you I, think I'm, there's a an anecdote to that. No, no. Uh, okay. You've got it. You've okay. got the only right. one. I appreciate that. Well, are you gonna sell it now because now it's more valuable? You're gonna it's like it's the only one. I'm gonna put it on eBay. No, 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 no. I there's other things that I have. Paulie, take it off eBay. Off eBay. Yeah, let's take it off eBay. <laughs> uh what do you think of this color, this sweater that I have on? It is it is a a pungent, pungent forceful pungent, color. Pungent, yeah. Pungent, yeah. pungent doesn't sound good. No, no, it's it's uh it it would it would look really really good on some people, not on me. I'm not thinking that that's your color. Okay. Right. No. I'm looking at my look at this sweater. It looks like a throwback uni. To, I, I right. You do. kind of like I just looked at it. I went. I, it looks like the old NFL like back in the day no, you know, I, kind of, with those leather helmets. You need and a leather like helmet, yeah. and it would look. I don't know if that's your color. Are we going to do this all day now? We're going to go back. You're a little upset that I don't like your sweater. No, I appreciate your honesty. Can't okay. you act like you like this? You're a sure. great actor. Of course act I Act like can. you like it. I, I really do. I like it. Speaking of great acting, I, that wasn't convincing at all. Uh, if you get a chance to see uh, Brian on Broadway, as uh, I did, and Network, and uh, it was wonderful. It was Thank great you. performance. And you've extended yes. your stay? Yes, we're we're going all the way through the end of April now. So okay. plenty of chances to come see a New York stage performance. And you can do see Brian cry. And you can see me cry. Yeah. Yeah. Now can you can you cry right now? Yes. You can. Yeah. <laughs> by, by looking at I my just sweater. Look at your sweater. I just think <laughs> Okay. The the disaster <laughs> that that sweater is okay. and it makes me cry. But you could cry on cue. Yeah, I mean it's it's not like you're a machine, but but if I start to think about something and I can bring tears to my eyes, yeah. Okay. Are you asking me to <laughs> no, cry? No. In I think no, you are. I sort of was, but you at, you want me to cry right now? Yeah. Well. Hmm. Cuz I can cry right now. Okay. Are we having a cry off? <laughs> yeah, we can. I don't know. For crying out loud. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we're crying, we're out, crying loud. out loud. This is how you win Emmys right here. Like can you can you can see there my eyes are watering up a little bit. I'm tearing up a little bit. Yes. You're very needy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Compliment this, my sweater. This, this morning, yeah. I'm, I'm this way all the time. Uh, we were uh, talking about 20-year anniversary of The Sopranos, and mm. we were wondering, would Breaking Bad have been made if we didn't have The Sopranos? I don't think so. I think what, what they were able to, David Chase was able to do in creating a character like Tony Soprano was certainly paving the way to allow the space for someone like Walter White to exist. Yeah, it was it was groundbreaking. Because you, I don't know if you root for the bad guy, but 
you don't root against. It feels like there is empathy for the bad guy. Well, it, it is easy. It's not that clear. What you root for is humanity. When you see the humanity in Tony Soprano, uh, for instance, the element of going to a therapist says he's searching. He's looking for something else, looking for some measure of wholeness as a human being. And that's embraceable. And I think that's why that character worked, is that he, he would go and he would kill someone, and then he'd go home and he'd have to deal with his son's homework or tardiness or his wife is complaining. Or, he was just a guy dealing with the stuff that we all deal with. And you, and you go, oh, I know, I know what that guy's dealing with. But Walter White didn't go to a therapist, did he, in Breaking Bad? No, he didn't have he didn't have time. He had the clock was ticking yeah. on, on Walter White. Did so. you think about that? Was that ever broached in the uh, in the script that he would actually be confessing to somebody? Uh, I think I think uh, Vince Gilligan did consider something like that, but it seemed it, it seemed to slow down the pace and the tempo of what he was trying to do. And as you notice, as the seasons went on, it it quickened. We lost some of the humor. Uh, of the earlier seasons when things got more tense and desperate and naturally the humor falls away because it's too horrific to to witness. So We also brought up Sex in the City came out before The Sopranos. And, yeah. you know, so here's HBO with Sex in the City, which was, you know, that was different. Yeah. I go back to Hill Street Blues as maybe a, a, a TV show that kind of... Oh, yeah. And you were on an episode of Hill Street Blues, weren't you? I was. I, I played Dennis France's lawyer. I, I was, I was I don't know, 28 years old. I played his lawyer. I went, they're hiring me for the lawyer? Really? I was surprised. But they did. And, and yeah, that was a groundbreaking show, for, uh, Stephen Bochco. And uh, wonderful, wonderful work and and I went on to do four different productions of Stephen Botka, Botchko's because his well, you did LA Law I did a, an episode of LA Law and then I had uh two experiences that weren't so good on on his shows uh one was called Brooklyn South where I was hired to play an internal affairs cop yeah and I never got a script it was just sides in those days my fax machine at night was brrr, rolling off, and you had to cut the, the paper in between. Remember that? It was like, and I would have reams of dialogue, and I'm working at 6.30 tomorrow morning, and just blocks and blocks of dialogue and names and events, and I'm going, I don't even, I don't even know what I'm saying. And so I we just had a pounding headache throughout the entire eight days. It was terrible. Could you have handled success that you've had now when you're 28 years old? I don't, I don't know. I mean, when I was 25, I moved to New York to be on a soap opera. So in a small dose, I had like, whoa, look at that. I'm working as an actor and dating models from the Ford agency and things like that. It was really, oh, it was fantastic. Really? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Oh, it was it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. This is the roaring eighties, man. I was eighty three, eighty four. Did you ever go to Studio Fifty Four? Oh yeah. How'd you do? I, I would <laughs> 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 what, what did you do? Uh you just go and you dance and you and you meet some people and you go in a back room and you have some fun and Did you have any famous friends back then? No, I I was I didn't know anybody, and I was really young, and I I I I still don't know to this day who anybody is. You know, it's like Wait, I really I really don't. I know you, yeah, and you guys, the dad ads. I know these guys because I watch. But you who's guys. your famous friends now? Yeah, uh, Tom Hanks is a friend, and he's he's, uh, and be, but only because our wives have known each other for forty years. For maybe longer. It's and, and so that's how I got to know him. And um, is he, has Tom Hanks ever made you mad? No. Is he is he capable of making you mad? I think if he did something despicable, I would be but, but he, angry with him. But he him. doesn't do that. No, he is he is he's my role model. Even though I'm about four or five months older than he is, yeah. he hits stardom quickly in his twenties and then held on to it. And then evolved wonderfully and aged into the new roles. And 
But more than that, it's what he was able to set up for himself personally. And I tell this to young actors all the time. You get your home life set. That's your foundation. So make that as sane as possible so that you can go insane at work. And, and Tom was, I saw that clearly, what he was doing and how he structured that. And, and I thought, that's what I want. I want to be able to have that solid and be able to do my work as a side thing and always be able to come back home. What is the challenge for you? Because you've done comedy, you've done drama, you've done theater. Is there one other I think the biggest challenge right now is looking at you in that sweater. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> it, it, it almost hurts your eyes a little bit, doesn't it? it you have to kind of, I have to kind of look up at your forehead. Do you, I can't, want, I can't do you want me to take this off and just be topless? Is that what you're asking? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're big on nudity. You're uh, not afraid of nudity. I'm not afraid of nudity. I don't know if I'd say I'm big on it, but other people looking at me naked might say I'm big on nudity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Imaginary yeah. ashtray for my imaginary <laughs> cigarette, sir. <laughs> but does your... I know your wife has been, you know, you've been married a long time. But yeah, when, 30 years. When you're there with a scene and you're in your underwear, or just your daughter, like, do, you know, do yeah. they get embarrassed or do they goof on you? Not so much anymore. My, you know, they don't watch too much of that. Um, my daughter's an actor, too, now. So we're, it's the family business. And it, it, we're so used to that. It's It's like... You're able to have your imaginary life and your real life separated and and both of them celebrated. Who's in their underwear more often, you or Will Ferrell? Oh, I think Will is probably more often and then he does that full on <laughs> full on nude thing. And he's got the Tiny appendix whiny. appendix scar <laughs> from it. and he and he's he's so fearless, man. He's like bulging over his his, you know, and, and he removed his appendix for the comedy. That's 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 what he does. That's dedication. That's, that's, that's dedication. Uh, have you have you ever who have you competed <laughs> for jobs with? I have no idea. I don't I don't know who I really compete against. You don't know who's auditioned for. Well, I heard I heard like for Walter White. I heard that uh, John Cusack was name was mentioned. And Matthew Broderick's name was mentioned, and Steve Zahn was mentioned. But that's I, all I know is that they were mentioned. I don't know if if it was ever if they ever really had meetings or I, I have no idea. I don't pay any attention to that. Do you audition? Do you have to audition now? Well, everything's an audition, even when you're not officially reading for something. When you're meeting a director uh, for a possible role, it's an audition. Yeah. He or she is looking at you going, I think he's right for it, or I don't think he's going to be right for it. And you're, in turn, look, talking to them about, how do you see this character played out? And do do I think I can work with you? But I would never know, meeting you, that you could have been Walter White. Like, what would you show me if I was a director and I said, oh, okay, Brian, come on in. And then I would have you read some things? Yeah, you'd read, if, if there was a regular audition set up, you'd go in and you'd have what they call sides, and you'd read a part of the character, and then they determined whether or not they felt you could do it. Now, I was very fortunate because I was on one episode of The X-Files that Vince Gilligan wrote and produced, and he was on the set, and the character that he wrote for this particular episode was despicable, anti-Semite, angry, in, uh, irascible This is when bastard. you're in the car with Duchovny? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and, and, but you still had to feel some level of human compassion for this man when he died uh, as a waste of a human life. And so it does take a little finesse to be able to walk that line of being, in one sense, despicable, and in the other sense, he's still a human being. I still care that he, you know, I, I don't want him to die, but I didn't like him. And so there's that kind of thing. And Vince thought, this is the combination that I want for, for Walter White. Without Vince Gilligan, I'm not sitting in this chair right now. 
and you're not wearing that sweater right now. <laughs> John Cusack is John sitting Cusack in that. John Cusack is sitting <laughs> yeah. in this chair yeah. right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, you did curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. Is there any script? No, there's no script. Larry David uh, sends out a, 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 a little breakdown of the scenes that you're in, and he'll say, in this scene, um, you're going to talk about your love of truffles and that you, you know, uh, uh, something else. Whatever responsibility you have as far as information getting uh, revealed. And then he says what he's going to reveal, uh, and this was the inequality of my my chairs in my therapist office or something, and which was the first episode I did. And uh, and then from then on, it's just it's just make it up, and somehow get to that point where you where you get. Now I had the the great good fortune of being in comedy boot camp, uh, being on on Seinfeld uh, for a few years. And watching Larry David craft a joke like a surgeon, and Jerry and Jerry and he working together, like it, talking in a language you can't really understand unless you're on the inside. And I was able to be watching that tennis match between them and going, "Oh my God, they're the timing and care. It's like a souffle. It's that delicate. You could crush a joke, or you can lift it." just by the way it's delivered or the timing. And I think that's the key is, and comedians talk about this, and, and Seinfeld, we had him, um, when, when did we have him New on? New York Super Bowl about five years ago. And, and so we did something. We did a pre-recorded bit, and we had him assess it, and he did it in brutal terms. Like yep. he would say, you need to be faster, you need to be louder, uh, take the air out here, and you should have ended it this way. But he, he broke it down in real time where he's watching it. Yes. And, you know, to have somebody, a professional ear listening for things. Right. They don't necessarily, it's not what they see is what, what they hear and how it, the cadence of it and yeah. everything. And that's what's amazing. And you're right. You know, you got that's a fast learning curve if you're around those two. Yeah, you, it is. And it's a lot to take in because Jerry probably had... Uh, the 10,000 hours to become proficient and expert in that, in that field. And he, he knows from one night to another, he go, you know, I rushed that bit too fast. I'm going to pull back on that just a touch. And he, and, and he crafts that. And then every night is different. You have a different audience. Have Sometimes, you done stand up? Yeah, I did. I did stand up uh, back in the eighties. And the only reason I did it was because I was afraid of it. It scared me. The idea of getting up on stage having a microphone and a spotlight, and that's it. Go. And so I thought, oh, I got to overcome this fear. So I started doing stand-up back in the heyday of when there's so many comedy clubs all around. And I did at the Improv, the Comedy Store, the Laugh Factory, the Laugh Stop, the uh, even the Playboy Club, and this is all in L.A., uh, they had open mic nights. I never got paid for it, nor should I ever been paid for it. I rose to the level of mediocrity. Uh, and I remember one night I was at the laugh stop in the valley and I had my best night. I mean, I crushed and laughter and laughter and laughter. And I was so juiced. I was so excited that I got in the car and I drove right to the improv on Melrose. And I said, you got to get me on stage. I got it. I got it. I, got it. I finally got it. And the guy says, well, we're oh, hang on. Someone might drop out. Someone did drop out. And about, about, 10 to 1 o'clock in the morning. It was like 12.50 in the morning. Okay, you can go on for five minutes. Okay. And I go on, and it's the same routine, same night. Get up there. Nothing. Crickets. Just, un and, I'm, and that's how hard it is. Because it's like, it threw me because I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, this is exactly the same set, and I know the timing of what I'm doing. Nothing. And it was like, Oh my God! I gotta get out of this. <laughs> it's brutal. Do you think that the better looking you are, the tougher it is to be funny? Well, I should know. Yeah, it was exactly. Extremely. That's difficult. why you're not that funny. You know, you, you're just Thank too you. good Thank looking. Thank you. Thank. <laughs> yeah, I know. The burden of of yeah. gorgeousness. Yeah. Uh, like, could Brad Pitt be a, a stand up comedian? Like, would would people? That's. I don't know. You know, not so much. Right? I think. I think. When you are a good-looking person and, and 
you know, you've had that gift your whole life. You, things are, are available to you that are not available to other people, but there are some things that you're not accessible to. If you're a wallflower, if you're introverted, if you're not very attractive, you have the, the luxury of observation. You can see the, <laughs> yeah. the smart people and the good people playing and the good looking people and you go, wow, look at them. But you can also develop, you know, other skills. Yes, Paul. Brian said not very attractive. and He looked right towards the four of us. He didn't even he just looked right directly well, at the that, four of us. That was just that was just on purpose. That's all. <laughs> that was completely. No, no. Uh, the Danettes are gorgeous. The handsome the Brian Cranston. Can you uh, stick around? Yeah. OK, we'll yeah. come back. I'm going to talk about the movie. When do you have to be on at Broadway? Uh, on Broadway, uh, like what, what time do you get? There? I, I get there an hour and a half before the show starts, like five thirty. Okay. Oh, great! Now he said five. <laughs> now people are gonna wait outside. Like, Thanks, Dan. I mean, did I say five thirty? No, yeah, no, 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 no. Seven. Seven. I get there just two minutes before we go on stage. All right. We'll come back with Brian Cranston after this in the Dan Patrick Show. The Upside with Brian Cranston. Uh, Kevin Hart is in it. Nicole Kidman, good kisser. She is in the movie. Juliana Margulies and uh, Tate Donovan are uh, in the movie. Yeah, it's well. a good movie. Yes. And, uh, well, can you give us a synopsis here while I still have you before your based, handlers yeah, take you? Based on a, on a true story about um, a, a wealthy man who uh, had a hang gliding accident and became a quadriplegic. And he's dealing with all the, the, the issues that that would naturally happen. And... and one day, he's this man who comes into his life uh, by accident. Uh, he hires as a personal uh, um, attendant to to help him get through his day, and it's he's terribly unqualified, but he liked him. He he felt he was honest and and approachable. And this is Kevin Hart. And this is Kevin Hart's character. And uh, they form a, a friendship, the, a very unlikely friendship. But it is true, and these two men are still friends to this day and see each other regularly, uh, even though they live in different countries. Um, and this film is a takeoff of that, and it's uh, it's really beautiful. It's funny, it's heartfelt, it's it's life affirming, and uplifting. And you make out with Nicole Kidman? I don't. I wouldn't. It was hard to say that I make out with Nicole Kidman. No, I mean, I it, would, it would help sell tickets. It would help sell. No, no. She's a lovely, lovely woman. And Julianne Margulies. Julianne Margulies. Yeah. Uh, it, she, she's wonderful. In yeah, this these too. are talented, talented co-stars. Uh, yeah, The Upside. It's yeah. really good. And it's in theaters uh, right on, now. On, on Friday. And Network, if you get a chance to come to New York, go see Network. Thank you. Because you, you it, it's uh, an amazing performance. Really. Thank is. you, Dan. And move me to tears, believe it or not. Just like you... It, so wait a minute, the tears that you did earlier in the show, yes, those were fake. Yes. So but how do I know the tears that you were moved to by? You don't know. Oh my God! You, I. But I did when I saw you backstage. When yeah. you you made time for me after David Duchovny, you spent like fifteen minutes with him, and I went Duchovny. I mean, come on, like hey. Like, get him out of here. No, it was Duchovny. Like, how many Super Bowl trophies has Duchovny handed out? <laughs> That's true. Right? That's true. And would you check? Zero, Z right? Zero for Duchovny. Yeah. And he's talking to Duchovny. Remember that uh, episode we did, uh, The X-Files? And, oh. And then so all those were tears of jealousy. Yes, they were. Very much so. Uh, thank you. I am happy for you. Thank you, buddy. Uh, and thank you uh, for coming in. He's Brian Cray. You can leave now. Okay. <laughs> no, no, your handlers want you to leave. Oh, I have to actually physically leave? Yeah, you leave. leave. This is a walk-off. Oh, this, walk this is it right there in, that, in a bad sweater. That's, thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. That's thank Brian you. Cranston. I think it's up for debate who's got a worse sweater on. And uh, wow. I, don't know if it's a force, I don't know if it's a foregone conclusion. Let's I, the vote. Let's the vote of the day. Okay. Right All right. Now. You guys be honest an now. Honest vote. Be honest on the... What sweater, what sweater you would wear? you wear? Okay. Which, if you had to wear one of these sweaters, okay. which one would you wear? Paulie? I love Earth Tones and Tweed. I love his outfit. Okay. Seaton O'Connor. We're actually getting tweets from viewers of the show who want to know where Brian got the sweater. So it's That's it's a too. big hit. And the pants are crushing. Um, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, he's crushing I like today. The, I like the ensemble. Yeah. Uh, McLovin. 
Uh, I don't work for Brian Dan. I love your sweat. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going Cranston all the way. All right, Sorry, three man. to one. Sorry, man. Uh, Sucker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Hey, by the way, what? Great talk on the on sports and football, and uh, it was just <laughs> man, it's always good. Uh, your handlers said that you didn't want to talk sports. <laughs> they did not they tell said you that. They want to talk. The, oh, stop! They it. want to talk the craft that I'm most familiar with, All right, and that is thing. acting. Go Rams! I'm going to start crying if you don't leave. All right, going. All right, that's Goodbye. Brian Cranston. Thank you, everybody. The upside. He's with uh, Kevin Hart, Nicole Kidman, and Julianne Margulies in theaters. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.